welcome you all back to another video in microbiological insights and in this video we will be going to discuss about the chemical methods of sterilization and these are the subheadings we are going to discuss here the first is the characteristics of a ideal disinfectant the second is the factors that determine the potency of disinfectants and the third one is the category of disinfectants such as high level disinfectant intermediate level disinfectants and low level disinfectants and if you want to watch these videos in tamil means you can please subscribe the channel microbiological concepts and this is the part 1 video of chemical methods of sterilization okay let's move into the video before entering into the topic we should know what is sterilization sterilization is a process that destroys or eliminates all the microbial forms of life and mainly the sterilization process is carried out in laboratories and uh, in hospitals by physical or by chemical methods no what are the physical methods of sterilization heat sterilization such as dry heat sterilization moist heat sterilization then radiation method of sterilization then filtration method of sterilization all these comes under physical category so this physical methods of sterilization are generally used to sterilize the objects such as glass vases or uh, surgical instruments etc no then chemical methods of sterilization what is chemical method of sterilization in the chemical methods of sterilization we are going to use a chemical to sterilize the particular environment the examples of chemical method of sterilization is disinfection and antisepsis what is disinfection disinfection is a process that eliminates many or most of the pathogenic microorganisms except the bacterial spores on an inanimate objects inanimate means non living what is antisepsis antisepsis is the destruction or inhibition of microorganisms on living tissue so we are using disinfection process for inanimate objects and using antiseptic solution for sterilizing the living tissues this antiseptics limits or control the harmful results of infection and another very important thing is the proper use of chemical agents is very very essential for a laboratory and hospital safety the chemicals are also employed to prevent the microbial growth in food industry and it also used to treat some infectious diseases also next we move on to the characteristics of a ideal disinfectants there are many char important characteristics the first character is it should have a wide spectrum of activity wide spectrum means it should be active against all the microbes all the living form of microorganisms such as gram positive bacteria gram negative bacteria acid fast bacteria bacterial endospores fungi and viruses so it should be very effective against all the microbes and it should be active at high dilutions we are not going to use the disinfectant in concentrated solution no so we are going to dilute that solution and then only we are using to clean that area so it should be effective at high dilutions and in the presence of organic matter what are the organic matter blood sample or sputum or feces so it should be effective in the presence of organic matter also and it should be effective in both acid and alkaline media and it should have speedy action after application so if we clean that particular area with a pro with a lysol or detol solution or any disinfectant no the action should be very speed otherwise it shouldn't be effective no so it should have speedy action it should have high penetrating power it should be stable 
and it should be compatible with the other antiseptics and disinfectants. Compatible means it should be able to exist or occur together with other antiseptics without occurring any changes. And it should not corrode metals. Sometimes we are using disinfectants to clean the surgical instruments. They, they are all made up of metals, you know. So, in that case, it should not corrode that metals. And sometimes we are cleaning the wounds with the antiseptic solution. So, in that case, it should not cause any irritation or sensitization to the tissues, local tissues. And it should not interfere with the healing process. Suppose we are applying this antiseptic solution to clean the wound means at that time it should not interfere with the healing process. If it interferes with the healing process means it should not be a ideal disinfectant. And another important property is it should not be toxic if in case it absorbed into the circulation. And the very very important thing is it should be cheap and easily available and it should be safe and easy to use. So if a disinfectant with all these characteristic means it should be an ideal disinfectant. But such an ideal chemical is it is not available in the market. So it is yet to be found. So what are the factors that determine the potency of disinfectants? What are the factors? The first one is the concentration and stability of the agent. Then the nature of the organism. The third one is the time of action. Fourth one is pH. Fifth one is temperature. The sixth one is the presence of organic or other interfering substances. The last one is the nature of item to be disinfected. So, these are the factors that determine the, the efficiency of disinfectants. Mainly the disinfectants are divided into three groups. They are the high level disinfectants, intermediate level disinfectants and low level disinfectants. So, now let us see about the high level disinfectants. So, in the high level disinfection, the sterilization is very effective. So, it can kill spores also. So, it can kill all the microbes including spores. So, th that is high level disinfectants. Some spore forms are escaped from the intermediate level disinfection and sometimes some microorganisms also remain viable or escape from the low level disinfection process. So, the high level disinfectants are mainly used for the items which are involved in the inversive pr procedures uh, that cannot withstand the sterilization process. So, what are the materials? Endoscopes. Endoscopes uh, is nothing but a thin tube with powerful light and tiny camera at the end. So, these endoscopes are used for the doctors to study the internal organs. Then, it is used to, to sterilize the st surgical instruments with the, um, plastic or other components. So, those surgical instruments which cannot be autoclaved is treated with the disinfectants. Two examples are given. The treatment with the moist heat and the use of liquids such as glutaraldehyde, hydrogen peroxide, paracetic acid, chlorine dioxide and other chlorine compounds comes under the high level disinfectant category. The next is the intermediate level disinfectants. This intermediate level disinfectants are mainly used to clean the surfaces such as workbench or instruments in which the contamination with bacterial spores or other highly resilient organisms. So to clean the particular surface or instruments means we are using the intermediate level disinfectants. Mainly this intermediate level disinfectants are used to sterilize the flexible fiber optic endoscopes, laryngoscopes. These laryngoscopes are used to study the larynx region. No? 
then vaginal specula, anesthesia breathing circuits or other medical items. These are all semi-critical instruments. So what are the examples of intermediate level disinfectants, alcohols, iodophore compounds, phenolic compounds. The third one is the low level disinfectants. This low level disinfectants are used to treat the non-clinical instruments and devices. What are non-critical instruments and devices? Blood pressure cuffs, electrocardiogram electrodes and stethoscopes. So, to sterilize these instruments, we are using the low level disinfectants. And this low level disinfectants is very mild in nature and it do not penetrate through the mucosal surfaces or into tissues if disinfectants comes in contact with the patients. No? And the examples of low level disinfectants are quaternary ammonium compounds. So I think you understand clearly this topic. If you find any difficulty means please write your queries in the comment section. Okay. Thank you. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share, like and click the bell button. If you have any more doubts, you can write your doubts in the comment section below. Thank you.